Have you ever wondered why it's important to know your spouse's love language and what you can learn from truly understanding them? Find out in today's episode. Hi, this is Aura Alatishe with CTN and we're back again with another Marriage Talks. This topic will be about learning and speaking your spouse's love languages. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Welcome back everyone. My name is Chelsea. And my name is Rune. And here on CTN, we are continuing our segment, Marriage Talks. We have our special guest with us, and we are going to talk today about love languages. And thank you very much, Pastor, for joining us once again. Our first question today will be, what are the five languages of love? Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here again. So last time, just to have a recap, we spoke about uh, speaking pleasant words uh, to your spouse that that will help to fill the tank. Another element that we want to learn about today is uh, five languages of love. Ability to speak, to learn, and to speak one's uh, spouse language is very, very important. And the five languages of love are word of affirmation. What is word of affirmation? Is speaking encouraging words to your spouse. Another one is act of service. Act of service is uh, helping your spouse to do one thing or the other, especially to alleviate uh, stress. Another one is receiving gifts. Everybody loves gifts, but that doesn't mean that is the primary language of that person. Uh, even the language that we're talking about, there's the main language and there's dialect, but mainly the language. So receiving a uh, gift is buying your spouse uh, a good gift. Something that is very uh, tangible, a thoughtful one. Doesn't have to be expensive, but the thought behind it uh, matters. At, and it has to be at random. Not because it's your birthday, so I give it to you, but random gifts outside anniversaries and birthdays. Uh, the fourth one is quality time. Spending time with your spouse. When I say time, we're talking about undivided attention. Because people can be in the same house. And, and 24 hours, I still do not have time for each other. So undivided attention, having meaningful conversation, uh, can be date nights, uh, vacations together, and things like that. And the last one is what we call physical touch. Physical touch is uh, showing affection through touch, kissing, hugging, holding uh, one spouse. Those are the five languages of love. Thank you. So I know with love languages, there's a lot for people, they feel some type of way. So why is it important for one to learn and to speak your spouse's love language? It's quite important. For example, I'll give you this example. If I'm a fresh speaking person and I say Ti Amo, and that person only speak English, does not understand French. I can scream te amo, te amo, many times, even with all my energy, it means nothing to the other person because it's not the language that he or she understands. But if I speak the same English that both of us understand, I say, I love you, the reaction I will get will be quite different. Either I smile or hug or at least say, I love you back. So if one spouse is a uh, love language is act of service and you are buying gifts you are even buying expensive gifts and the person is not actually uh, not appreciating it uh, it can lead to frustration because why this husband is spending a lot of money on the wife buying gifts and taking his or her time maybe on the computer, even just shopping for it. It's, it, it, it's time consuming. And you just bring the gift and the wife took the gift and said, oh, thank you, and put it away. It's not helpful. And there's so many divorces that has gone that way, that happened that way out of frustration. Because one person is working 100%, trying his or her best to please the spouse, and the, the spouse is not receiving it back or accepting it or at least meeting the person at that point 
So we won't get frustrated out of that relationship. And both of them are right. And the only problem is that the person that is buying gifts all the time to, did not take time to learn that wife's uh, love language. Maybe the love language is act of service. I really don't need those expensive gifts if only you could help me to do certain things in my house. If you only you can help me to maybe do homework with the children while I'm cooking. So it's very important that takes away frustration. It also reduces criticism at home. It helps uh, to address the issue and spend the time of bickering to love each other and enjoy the most uh, relationship together. That's very powerful. Thank you very much for sharing. Third question would be what are the benefits of these love languages? And from where I start by saying number one, it will erase frustration. At least limit it to the barest minimum. Then it uh, promotes intimacy between the two. Remember now, we are not fighting. We are growing together. So there's room for that intimacy, bonding between the two. And also it shows selflessness. Because it takes a lot of uh, effort to want to learn my language. Not to want to tell me that I must learn yours and be satisfied, or I must be satisfied with whatever language you speak to me. So that requires a lot of selflessness to go a long way to go and learn that language that is not convenient. It's just like telling you you must learn French, like I said, or Spanish, and that means I have to study. And also, uh, it helps with my own personal growth. Thank you so much. I know we took something home today. Yeah, definitely took something home today. And how important it is for you to master your spouse's love language as well. Right. So please, we would love to hear from you guys as well. Share your comments in the comment section down below. I hope to see you again next time. For love that could only be found in you. Perfect always is your unfailing love. It's all in you, my G. Never changing, never failing. Oh, yeah.